Second Chronicles chapter 6, verse 22. We're in Solomon's prayer, praying to God after the dedication of the temple that's just been built. And we're looking at the what ifs. Verse 22, if a man sin against a neighbor, an oath be laid upon him to make him swear, and the oath come before thy altar in this house. Now we got something like that in Matthew chapter 5, 23. Matthew 5, 23. It's kind of reversed. Jesus says in Matthew 5, 23. What Solomon is saying, listen, I've got a sin. I've got a problem against this guy. And I'm going to take it to the altar. I'm going to Jerusalem. And I'm going to bring it to the priests who are the judges. Jesus says in Matthew 523 therefore if thou bring thy gifts would be the animal offering to the altar and there remembers that thy brother has all against thee leave there the gift before the altar and go thy way first be reconciled to thy brother and then come and offer thy gift well Solomon is saying well that guy who you offended is coming to the altar And then hear thou from heaven, the one who has had done wrong too, and do judge thy servants. I just somebody go up to God and say, judge not, least you be judged. I, I can just picture that. And I'm, I'm not joking. I think there are going to be people going to walk up to Jesus Christ at the great white throne judge and say, judge not, least you be judged. Listen, did that rich man in hell change? No judge said the king thy servants by requiting that means to reward the wicked by recompensing his way upon his own head and by justifying the righteous by giving him according to his righteousness lord there's there's two men here one of them's going to come to the altar he's innocent he's right somebody has done him wrong jesus in matthew 5 says you come to the altar you're the one that's done something wrong. Go get right with your brother. Verse 24. If thy people Israel be put to worse before the enemy. Why? Because they have sinned against thee. Now we're looking at the nation of Israel. And when it comes to war and enemies, one of the things could be because God is angry with you. Number two could be, is you curse Israel in some way. Babylon was destroyed because they cursed Israel. German government of the Nazi party had been cursed because they cursed Israel. The Catholic Church will yet be cursed because she curses Israel. God's not finished with what the work he has for her to do. So they've been turned over to the enemies because of their sin. And it will happen. North Israel will go into captivity by the Assyrians. Judah will go into captivity by the Babylons because of sin. And shall return, Ezra Nehemiah, and confess their name, thy name, Ezra Nehemiah, and pray and make supplication before thee in this house. Now look, that's where people in religions get, oh, that sounds good. Let's pray towards a mountain. Let's pray to a city. Let's pray to a building. Let's pray to something. Let's have beads. That comes out the Old Testament. That comes out Solomon talking about the children of Israel, not Gentile. No Gentile, no church age person is told to pray to anything but Jesus Christ. And to God the Father and the Holy Spirit. Then hear thou from the heavens, plural, and forgive the sin of thy people Israel, and bring them again unto the land, that's their land, which thou gavest their and to their fathers, Ezra and Nehemiah. The land they'll kind of go back in the in the tribulation, but when Jesus Christ brings them back, there'll be a great repentance at that point at the temple. All right, how about this one? 
when the heaven is shut up and there is no rain weather conditions whether severe of no rain or complete storm may be because of the anger of God could be here it is because they have sinned against thee you say that's not possible all right so tell me what happened in Noah's day were they Jewish people absolutely not what did God do he caused too much rain upon who those that wicked and violence is not there not going to be no rain for a period of three and a half years of tribulation period does not does that not affect the Jewish and the Gentiles yes so weather conditions may be an act of God according to insurance policies how come insurance policies don't say it was an act of the Catholic Church or an act of Allah your insurance policy and most sometimes some of your lease policy when you rent something called an act of God why because they have sinned against thee and there are famines coming up no rain Elijah and Eli Elijah and Ahab is coming no rain why because Ahab sinned Jezebel sinned Solomon's a prophet if they pray toward this place and confess thy name and turn from their sins see the repenting you just don't turn to Jerusalem okay God give us rain and God opens up the faucets you got to repent and get right and confess the name of the only name of all names Jehovah God when thou dost afflict them so he sees God doing it then hear thou from heaven and forgive the sins of thy servants and the people of Israel when thou hast taught them the good way listen God told them how to do it God's given them Genesis Exodus Leviticus Numbers Deuteronomy Joshua Judges this is what you're supposed to do and this is not what you're supposed to do listen the church is in for a great surprise at the judgment seat of Christ when God has given us 66 books to tell us what we're not to do and what we do and we are in a generation where we call evil good and good evil churches are doing that which is evil and it's approved by God and when you do something that is good that's not in the Bible it's not what Jesus would do but that was taught them the good way where they should walk and send rain upon thy land that's a, that's the end of tribulation just before the millennial passage when there's been three and a half years of no rain and everything's drying up and the water has become bitter bitter uh, uh, wormwood and then it's turned to blood thanks to Moses and Elijah walking around when Jesus Christ comes the early and latter rains will come and bless that land of the children of Israel rain upon thy land which thou hast given unto thy people for inheritance and then in Elijah's time with Ahab the rain comes and it was a blessing if there be dirt now that's an interesting word dirt take off the D you got earth then take off the R you got death it's death in the earth this is worse than a famine this is no production when you had the famine that was in Egypt with Joseph seven years of famine Jacob tells his son say listen get double the money give him some nuts some honey some but there was fruits there was honey there was resources for the children of Israel to come into Egypt say listen we'll trade you all this stuff for corn dirt is when there's nothing absolutely nothing you see this in in India why is there dearth in India because let your elephant God take care of you 
Let all your gods, uh, let your grandma cockroach take care of you. Let Moo Moo Cow take care of you. Oh, we're starving. Oh, oh, feed the, uh, you know, take care of these children in India. They're just starving. They got flies over their face. You just had a hamburger walk by. Well, that's, that may be grandpa. Well, then grandpa needs to feed the family. Kill it. That's so cruel. That's your God. My God said, if I can, right now, if I can bow my head and say, Lord God, I thank you for this hamburger. Lord God, I thank you for this pork chop. In the name of Jesus Christ, I'm going to enjoy bacon. And you got people out there with God, oh, can't do this, can't do that. Then get off the television set and, and stop trying to deceive people to steal your money. Dirt. I mean, it's just dead. If there be pestilence, if there be blasting, that's going on in Israel today. They're launching missiles into Israel today. What what does it do? It makes a blast. It's an explosion. Or mildew. You got that in Florida. You got that in the jungle regions. And it has become deadly. Locusts. Or caterpillars. I don't know what would be worse, locusts or caterpillars, little creepy little things crawling around and eating everything. You see that in the book of Job. Locusts, caterpillars, canker worms, I think there's something else. That's all, Solomon is preaching to the children of Israel, if you don't get right and do right, it's going to get worse, far worse. All right? If that's not bad enough, if their enemies besiege them, they come in, they surround the city, and they don't allow... The, t the tanker truck, they don't allow the tractor trailers to come in and bring food. And when you go into the, sh the shelves of the stores in the city, there are dead rats sitting there on the shelf, and the dead rat now has a price tag, two ninety five. dollars A uh, dove goes poop, and they put it in a package and say, well, here's the price of dove poop or dung. A, an ass falls in the ground in the city. They chop off his head and say, here, we'll sell it to you. This is yet still coming in as our study will continue. Why? Because they offended God the Holy. And with not, not knowing, because I said, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judge, they know what is right. And they chose not to obey God. God did not force them into rebellion. And God did not force them to get right. But in a way with these judgments, he's trying to get them right. He's trying to make life so hard to get their attention and say, Hey, you know, you got to come back to me. And yet the rebellion of man just gets worse and worse and worse. If their enemies besiege them in the cities of their land, so they're in the land, this happens. Whatsoever sore or whatsoever sickness there be. Sickness, now got to hear me out. Listen to me. Some sicknesses, some are because of your sins. All right? When the doctor tells you you have cirrhosis of the liver and you've been drinking all your life, that is because of your sin. When you have been sleeping around with women or men that you're not supposed to be sleeping around, the doctor says you got an STD, that is because of your sin. God told you, one woman in the marriage bed, a male and a female. And you violate that, you get diseases. Bible says don't drink. You violate that, you mess up your body. And then sometimes you get sick by... Somebody coughs on you or the environment or stuff like that or your body's just weak. But sickness can be because you sinned against God. There it is. Then what prayer or what supplication. So there's a difference between prayer and supplication. Prayer is you're talking God. Supplication, oh Lord God, I need help. Help. Supplication is pretty much not what other people do for you. Other people will pray for you. Will pray for you. Supplication usually comes out of your mouth or if not a loved one. When a loved one is down and out and there's nothing else that they can do but pray to God. And they're trying every prayer they can do. 
whatsoever shall be made of any man. That's kind of interesting. Any man. Or of all thy people. So now we are looking at the Gentile. And the Jewish person. Who has been afflicted. Thy people Israel. When everyone. Everyone shall know. His own sore. We know what that a sore is. His own grief. And shall spread forth his hands in this house. Now that's not today. You can pray towards Jerusalem all you want. They ain't going to do you no good if you don't believe and do what God told you to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now God will answer prayer of lost people. That's the merciful grace of God long suffering. But he's not obligated. I guarantee there are probably people out there, I don't know, there are probably people out there, religions that say, if you pray towards our house, our your church building, God will hear. I guarantee it. Put your hands on the television set. Put your hands on the radio. Feel the vibes. I've heard of that one. I've heard of people saying doing that with ministry. I've not witnessed it, but I've heard people say it's happened. They told you, touch the radio, touch the TV. Foolish. Foolish. Pray to God. Pray to the Lord Jesus Christ. Where do Jews pray today? It says in the house. They pray to Jerusalem today. There's no house there. There is the dumb of the rock. That ain't going to do you no good. Then hear thou from heaven. And thy dwelling praise. So you can pray towards the house. But God's still dwelling in heaven. And forgive and render unto every man according unto his ways. Ouch. Ouch. What if God gave you exactly what you deserve? Solomon, you, 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 we got to change that verse. Whose heart thou knowest. So what was David? What did David deserve? He deserved death and hell. But why didn't God do it? Because his heart was tender toward God. And when his sin was made known, man, he got right with God instantly, correctly, and rightly. Right then and there. Thou knowest, for thou knowest the hearts of the children of men. You can fool your mother, you can fool your pastor, you can't fool God. That they may fear thee, to walk in thy ways so long as they live in the land which thou gavest unto their, our fathers. So, the lack of rain, the pestilence, the sickness, the enemies, that's to make you fear God. If I don't do what God tells me to do, he's going to spank me. As a child growing up with his parents, if I get caught by mom, if I get caught by dad, I'm going to drop my pants. It's not going to feel too well, or they're going to limit on something that I can't use for a while. And in the Bible, correction is, is given by God, it is to help. We are in a generation today, don't correct your children, and look how messed up the children are today. Verse 32. Moreover, concerning the stranger, Gentile, which is not of thy people, Israel, Gentile, but is come from a far country for thy name, for thy great name's sake. Naaman, Queen of Sheba, the Ethiopian eunuch, that they that thy mighty hand and thy stretch forth thy stretched out arm, if they come and pray in this house. Can't do that today, it's not no house. Some idiot will get up in a pulpit and say, they come to our church, come in at our prayer altar. And I have heard a pastor of a church say, if you don't come to his altar, God ain't listening to you. If you sit in that seat and you get right with God, not come up and get before the people come down to this altar, you're not getting right with God. I've heard a pastor out of my own ears say that. 
That's foolish. That's Old Testament. Many a times I've gone up to the altar. Many a times I've dealt, have dealt with the Lord right there where I'm sitting or standing in church. And God has worked with me both ways. I've even gotten right with God on my bed. I've even gotten right with God in the car. I've gotten right with God in the hospital. I've gotten, gotten right in the grocery store. I've gotten right in many places that are not a official altar of a church building. I've gotten right when I preach on, on the streets with the Lord. So don't get into, oh, this altar, our church altar. No, don't get into that. Come and pray in this house. Then hear thou from the heavens, even from thy dwelling place, heaven, and do according to all that the stranger calls to thee, for that all people of the earth may know thy name, and fear thee, as does thy people Israel may know that this house which I built is called by thy name. Now, can you say in the Old Testament, God never dealt with the Gentile, God was always for the Jew? What do you do with that verse? What do you do with Naaman? How about the Queen of Sheba? How about the Ethiopian eunuch? That Ethiopian, we know, went home safe. God works with Gentiles in the Old Testament, too. If thy people go out to war against their enemies, by the way that thou shalt send them, and they pray unto thee toward this city, which thou hast chosen, and the house which I have built for thy name, then hear thou from heaven their prayers and their supplications and maintain their cause. They're out in the battlefield. All right, let's pray to God. And we'll see that coming up. And we've seen that in Kings and Chronicles and Samuel. If they sin against thee. Now here's where it comes in Romans. For there is no man that sinneth not. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's where Paul got that from. I only read the Pauline epistles. Well, <laughs> Pauline epistle was not Pauline epistle. It was the Solomon epistle or prayer. How's that one? So, I mean, Solomon. Paul quoted from Solomon. Romans 3.23, I believe it is. 3.9, 3.23. They got this. And thou be angry with them. God is love. God hates the sin and loves the sinner. If they sin against thee, for there is no man that sinneth not, and thou be angry with them, the people. To say God is angry with the sin and not angry with the people, that's the sinner, is against the Bible. Solomon says, throw that in the garbage can. It's wrong. Sorry, the Bible's correct. Your little sayings that you can sell and put on the coffee cup, put on the sign, put on the little church bulletin board out in the front yard and all, it's wrong. God is angry with the sinner. And deliver them over to their enemies. Ooh. And they carry them away captive in the land far off or near. There's Daniel. At the close of Second Chronicles. Uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Indigo. And they bethink themselves in the land where they have been carried captive, and churn and pray unto thee the land of their captivity, Daniel, saying, We have sinned, Daniel. We have done amiss. That's the first time that word shows up, amiss. And have done wickedly. That's Daniel. Look at Solomon being a prophet, and yet he's going to fall to God's by the women he marries. Don't think you're so high in the prejudice I will never fall. What about Dirk? Is that the first time that one? What's that? Dirk. Is that the first time that one? I don't have that marked. I think it's so, again, I sat under a preacher. I'm going to squirt the devil with a water gun, Bob. You're foolish. You're foolish. We have sinned, that's Daniel. We have done amiss and have done wickedly. Dwelt wickedly. If they return to thee with all their heart, Daniel, Ezra, Nehemiah, with all their soul, in the land of their captivity, Babylon, wherever they have carried them captive, 
and pray toward the, the, their land, which thou gavest unto their fathers. That's not Gentile. That's not church. That's Jewish. God gave no land to the church. Unless you're a Roman Catholic trying to steal land, unless you're a Muslim trying to steal land, unless you're a congregational trying to steal land, unless you're... But to the church of Jesus Christ, we don't have a land. This world is not our home. We're just a passing through. Now, to the Jewish people, there's land. Thou hast chosen toward the house which I have built for thy name. Our house is New Jerusalem. Then hear thou from heaven, even from thy dwelling place, their prayers and their supplications, and maintain their cause for and forgive thy people. See now, see, that's unit. That's a group. That's not individual. When the children of Israel came back under Nehemiah and Ezra, God forgave them as a group, which have sinned against thee. Now closing up. Now my God... Let I beseech thee, thy eyes be open, and let thy ears be attend. That's the first time that shows up. And there's only one other place to be found in Second Chronicles 7.15. Attend unto the prayer that is made in this place. Now therefore arise, O Lord God, Jesus, in Acts chapter with Stephen Stone, 7 I believe that is. When Jesus stood up, according to what Solomon said, Jesus was waiting for them to repent at the preaching of Stephen. Had the nation of Israel repented that we put Jesus Christ the Messiah on the cross, we are going to listen to Stephen give the whole history. All our sins. Stephen nailed down their sin. Had they repented, man, history would have changed. We would be in the millennium now. At that point, Stephen, there would have been the seven years of tribulation. They still need a spanking. And then we'd be in the millennium. Now therefore arise, O Lord God, in thy resting place, thou and the ark of thy strength, let thy priests, O Lord God, Jewish priests, not Gentiles, be clothed with salvation. Oh, Jesus Christ is our clothing for salvation, not a priest. Jesus Christ, our great high priest, is the one that gives salvation. And let thy saints rejoice in goodness. How can a dead saint rejoice? And yet the Catholic Church says the only ones that can be saints are dead. Hmm. Catholic Church has got dead people speaking from the grave. Eerie. I'm a saint. Whether dead or alive, I'm a saint in Jesus Christ. I'm also a priest. I just don't call myself Father. O Lord God, turn not away the face of thy anointed. That's Christ. Christ means anointed. Anointed means Christ. That's Jesus Christ he's speaking about. Remember the mercies of David, thy servant. And he closes. 